but for the most part, if a major component like that has reached its end of life, it's gonna be that same way with the next buyer too. So why not address that immediately with the current buyer you have and not restart the whole process? We are here at our property down here in Osprey. Want to walk you guys through this property. We are about to close on this property here in the next week. It was a bank owned property. A lot of negotiating had to happen even up to this last minute because you're going to see uh, what happened. Uh, we actually have a tarp on this roof and we got some people to come out throw a tarp on the roof because we noticed inside there was some leaking starting to happen. We knew without a working air conditioner, this house was just going to start growing mold immediately and within a week we had some heavy rains and within that week period mold started to form so we had to go back to the bank renegotiate uh, the price down get some more money taken off and I want to give you guys a walkthrough right now uh, just show you guys this project it's one that's going to probably be taken uh, anywhere from a month month and a half uh, maybe two months it's a larger house but I'm thinking we're going to knock this project out in about six weeks we're still going through the process right now of determining who's going to be taking on this rehab we've had three different quotes come in we know we're going to have to replace the roof and most of the other major components we still got to get our AC guy out here to check on it being that it is a bank owned property we actually have power in this house which is a good thing uh, we were able to get some mold remediation people to come in here and throw some dehumidifiers in the house so as we go through you guys might hear a little bit of uh, external noise or just some excess noise and just so you know what that is that's actually these dehumidifiers that are set up in the house right now just to help lower the chance of additional mold forming throughout the house so let's do this walkthrough let me show you guys what's going on luckily we got the uh, wide angle lens on the camera right now So what you see right here is actually one of these humidifiers. Uh, there's a couple of these set up through the house. This is a pretty standard Florida home, the setup, where you walk in, you got your dining room. If there's two living areas, usually you've got your one family room there and then a living room, which is attached to your kitchen like you're seeing here. Through the kitchen, you do have your laundry area. Outside there, we do have our garage. I don't need to show you guys a two-car garage. Outside here, you can see there's a pool that's gonna need a lot of work. You can see this is a pool. It's got the cover over it right now so that as the house was being shown, people aren't gonna be falling in the pool. But again, this is a house with a bad roof. Another one of these dehumidifiers. You can see doors falling off. So this little humidifier right here, that's what got, look at the size of that. This is what the bank brought in when we told them that mold had started to form. They brought that huge humidifier in. That's what we had to call in the reinforcements. All right, so that's our new pine property. Again, we're picking this property up here in the next week. I just wanted to come do another quick walkthrough, see how much more this mold had spread. So I am gonna get out of here, gotta head up to back up to Sarasota, North Sarasota, uh, get some more photos done of another uh, rental property that's getting thrown on the market so we can get that thing thrown up. And I'm gonna get out of here before I actually catch something from all the mold in here. But we will do one more walkthrough of this place uh, the day before closing or the day of closing. Make sure nothing crazy has happened, like the whole roof's falling in. But can't wait to show you guys this project over the next uh, two months through some of these vlogs. So make sure you stay tuned. Now, on to the next one.
All right, so we're picking back up here. We're still over at the 13th property. I got some awesome news about what's been happening over here. So the last I showed you guys, we were just wrapping up. We were getting ready to list this property and we listed it and the activity was just amazing. I've uh, mentioned this before on other videos, but in the space of 300,000 and under, there is a major inventory shortage issue. And it's just evident when I put a property on the market such as this one that we priced at 139,000, ended up being our list price. This is the uh, two bedroom, one bath house. It's just a little bit under 700 square feet. And in the course of just 24 hours of having this listed, we ended up with over eight showings booked up through the weekend. We put it up on a Thursday. Uh, but by Friday evening, we had already accepted a contract. The first contract that was sent over to us, we reached out to the lender, uh, we talked with the agent, we had a really excited buyer who had been looking in the area for a while, so uh, we didn't wanna waste any time, we just wanted to get it under contract. So in 24 hours, we had this property under contract. Now, a couple days later, we're back at the property, we have the four point inspection and the full home inspection happening right now. Uh, we actually have a company called Bungalow Home Inspections here. I'm not the one that hired them. That is something that's always hired um, by the actual buyer and the buyer's agent. They're usually the ones that get that all set up. Typically, it's just the buyer because the agent shouldn't be getting involved too much on that. Uh, but we got an interesting situation here where uh, I'm actually the only one that showed up. The uh, buyer's agent actually lives a little bit further away from this town of Bradenton and the uh, buyer themselves had to be at work. So uh, I'm here just to make sure everybody got in. Everything Things going smooth you can see the ladder set up here in the back because they were just up on the roof checking that out but again we got a small house here but there's actually uh, two guys that showed up to do the inspection so uh, they are knocking it out but I just wanted to take you guys inside real quick and just show you I know one of the last things we left off on was just a few of the uh, punch out items that we wanted to get knocked out here so if you guys remember over at the AC unit uh, where the air handler was uh, we had a closet door and it wasn't set up in a way that it was easily accessible to get to the hot water heater or the air handler. So I wanted to make sure our guys came back over here and they did get this door fixed. So as you'll see, they actually did end up uh, getting it put on hinges so that we can open it up. We got that brand new um, AC system put in here, the brand new hot water heater. Uh, this is actually a whole permitted unit, so that's a great thing. But the inspectors are here, they're knocking the work out. This is not gonna be a long one for them. You can see they got some of their equipment here. They got some of that thermal imaging they gotta get done just to uh, check insulation, uh, check AC temperatures, that sort of thing. Uh, but we gotta move on to the next property. I'm gonna take you guys back up to the house that I was planning to photograph the last time when I was doing the photos here. Uh, the property we got on 10th Street West. So we're gonna head up there. We're actually gonna get some photos done because the property is all cleaned up fixed up and we are ready to get that one listed. So we're gonna head up over to 10th Street. I'm gonna show you guys that property. We're gonna keep moving on with the day. All right, we're just getting to 10th. See it right here behind me. We're gonna do a quick little walk through, check it out. We're gonna go get our photos knocked out as well. So hold tight, we're gonna get you guys inside. So we're wrapping up today. It started out where we were up there in Bradenton. We showed up for the home inspection. We did not stay there very long. Then we got ourselves up to our 10th Street property, which was a rental that got vacant that we are now throwing up on the retail market. Uh, it is now late afternoon. We're getting close to dinner time. I just got the MLS listing up, so we are good to go on that. We are ready to start fielding the showings. Uh, we priced it probably about $5,000 higher than where we thought we were gonna price it, uh, just because of what's available right now. We don't feel that there's really that much competition, and, and although it's not a completely rehab property, it is a livable property that we're listing for $115,000 in Village of the Arts of Bradenton. So I, I don't think we're gonna have any issues with that. After that, we headed over to the Meadows, which is in Sarasota County, where we took some photos for another agent, First time working with that agent, but went in there, uh, got some photos taken care of, and I just so happened to have had another lead that came in 
off of my postcards and it's actually a repeat lead. It's somebody that um, I, I tried to put under contract, I wanna say about three months ago, and she reached out again through my marketing, not realizing I was the same person. So we basically just repeated the whole same conversation, except the first time around, I never actually got a chance to get into her property. So I gave her a ring as I was finishing up my photos and just asked if she happened to be home. And she actually mentioned to me that she had two contracts in hand. So if I was in the area, it would actually be great time for me to stop by see the property that way i could give her verbally an offer and she could just let me know if it was something that was going to work or not since she has two other offers she's considering at this moment so i got myself right over to that property uh, i could not do filming over there just because they had the entire family helping this lady she's about to move into a home so she's a little bit older and the whole family was just getting the house ready and empty for her there was a lot of stuff in this house it needed everything on the inside so cosmetically, it needed all the updates, updating, uh, except the major components, the tile roof, the AC, the hot water heater, most of the plumbing, that was all actually in good working condition. Uh, so that's nice on a 2,000 square foot property, although with the cosmetics, it was still gonna be probably a forty to $50,000 rehab because of the 2,000 square feet and needing to update everything and this is a nice house that backs up to a golf course. So it's in a nice community and it's a, a rehab that would need to be done the right way if we're gonna be seeking a $400,000 uh, retail sales price. So with that in mind, knowing that it was gonna cost us about $50,000 in repairs, uh, my partner and I would be splitting profits. We have closing costs such as our 3% that we're gonna be giving to a buyer's agent we knew where our offer needed to be. So we came in initially offering around 200 and um, in the high 270s. And she quickly told me that just wasn't gonna get it done. Knowing that I had now thrown a number out there and she wasn't willing to disclose her other contracts and the other numbers prior, I, I was able to get her to tell me, you know, how much more I'd really need to come up for it to be something that would actually make sense. She told me I'd have to come up another $40,000. So why do I tell you all that? Just to let you know that they're not all winners. You're gonna have deals that just don't work out, but it's all about making the offers. Make the offers, the deals would come, will come. So make enough offers and it's a numbers game like everything in sales. But there was one thing I wanted to circle back around to. I wanted to circle back around to home inspections and just reiterate why I personally think it is so important that you, I don't care if you're the investor, you're the real estate agent on the buying or selling side, maybe you're the buyer, you should always attend a home inspection. And I say that because you're building a relationship not only with the inspector, uh, that inspector is going to be the person that's showing you what is and what isn't working on your property. Uh, but you also need to be able to go into these houses and have an understanding of how things work. And there's no better way to, to get that knowledge sometimes than following an inspector around and just asking questions. They might not like that. It depends on which side of the table you're on. Maybe if you're not the person that paid that inspector, they might not be willing to spend that time with you. Uh, but it's still a good chance for you to build rapport. And it's a good chance for me as a selling agent to build rapport with not only the buyer, uh, but also the buyer's agent, because that could be potential repeat business for me down the road. And maybe this deal doesn't go through because of the inspection. It would still be good to have a relationship with that agent because you never know what's going to happen, like we were saying. Uh, the other thing is, you know, you always want to tread lightly with the buyer, um, the buyer's agent's actual buyer, because, you know, that's not your client, but it doesn't mean you can't build rapport with them. Maybe you want to have a conversation about things that you did to the property answer specific questions they may have. I was actually at another inspection on a property that we're selling yesterday down in Venice, Florida, which I haven't shown you guys that property yet, but that house actually went through structural permitting updates where there was underpinning done. And that's something that brings up questions. That, there was also questions about the well tank or the well system uh, on the side of the house. So it was really beneficial for me to be there and just address some of the immediate direct concerns of the buyer. You know, they were questions, but they were also questions that could have uh, gone more towards the inspector and not gotten directed at me where the inspector wouldn't have known the answer right away. And if an inspector doesn't have an answer, usually their answer is, 
well, go find somebody that will know the answer, meaning another professional. So they're sitting there asking me about structural questions about the underpinning of this house and and how the foundation got raised. Well, I was able to talk about the process that I went through, rattle off the name of the company, let them know that there's a lifetime warranty on the underpinning, and just make them feel more at ease where they could have left that inspection not being at ease because they didn't know that answer. So it's always good to be there, show face, even if you can only show up for five minutes, go show up, say hi to everybody, make sure the inspector doesn't have any simple questions such as where the shutoff, uh, water shutoff is to the house or, or where the air handler is located. Yes, things that they will figure out or know, but anything you can do to help the process is gonna be helpful. And the last thing I will add, you know, I like to stress to the buyer's agent and to the buyer while I'm sitting there that we're investors, we don't have emotional attachment to these properties. And when things pop up on the inspection report, we are willing to help get this deal to the finish line. So I always tell my buyer's agents, listen, don't let your buyer get freaked out by this inspection report. I don't care what pops up on it. Maybe our rehabbers just skipped over and missed something because they've been staring at this property for two years. I'm gonna send them back to go take care of things, especially items that I already paid for with my rehab bid. But maybe it's something larger. Maybe it's the roof is gonna get, have to get replaced. Again, we're investors. We have money to take care of major repairs like that. And we know an item such as a roof. Say the roof fails, the electric panel fails. Well, there's a good chance that's gonna fail for any inspector that comes out there, that's not always the case, but for the most part, if a major component like that has reached its end of life, it's gonna be that same way with the next buyer too. So why not address that immediately with the current buyer you have and not restart the whole process? So those are things that I like to accomplish by showing up to these inspections. And yes, there's gonna be other things, but we're only on vlog, I don't know, four, five at this point. So there will be plenty more information to come. I hope you guys got something out of that. And until the next one, go out there and keep putting those offers in and you're gonna get that property. All right, till next time.